In the second part, we're still with Kevin Vogels. Um, we're going to talk about his collaboration with the Scrum team. So in this part, um, I want you to ask you to tell us a bit about um, your day-to-day -day collaboration, uh, um, what's your approach to refinement, to planning, to um, reviews, retrospectives, just the whole thing about collaborating with the team. Yeah. So in the next part, we're going to the stakeholder part. Maybe you need to mention it a few times, but uh, yeah. um, let's see how that goes. But yeah. let's focus on the team first. Yeah. Uh, um, well, uh, we're of, of course, we're a multidisciplinary team. Uh, we're, we're, uh, the, the team has been uh, in different sizes. Uh, at, at the moment, we're with six. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it has its pros and its cons. Uh, I, I think there's a maximum, of course, of how, how large a team can be, a single team before you split it up in, in, in two teams. Um, but that's also what we've been through, uh, trying to make it bigger or smaller. And sometimes you don't have any choice because someone decides to leave or, or mm. changes his role or whatever. So, um, and we, we have a, a four week sprint at the moment. Um, and that might sound uh, as a long sprint, but we, we started off with weekly sprints. That's, oh wow! Uh, that's wow. We, we started off really, really uh, energetic, and you know we're gonna have goals, weekly goals that we're going to meet. And uh, but I mean, the, the, let's say the technical side of things were fine. So the deployment and everything, and and, and testing, it, w it, it was all doable. Mm. But it was more the, the amount of work, the the body that we could give to the work, um, that was just too short. For for a week uh, weekly yeah. sprint to short to reach meaningful goals yeah. week after week yeah because okay. in in the end we were still doing two three sprints to release something meaningful mm -hmm. so uh, in in our opinion it, it for, for the for the whole team to actually wrap its mind around a problem and 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 make sure we we because I, I but that's in our experience mm. during a sprint even though we've had all the the, the backlog grooming sessions and the user story sessions, um, we always uh, uh, evolve during a sprint because some things just land on their place during a sprint. And sometimes yes. you, you encounter stuff you just haven't thought about and you have to go back to the drawing board. But in some in, in a positive way, things land on in their place and, and the thinking becomes better and smoother mm. every time you, you can encounter the same problem. So uh, uh, that's why we went up to, to two weeks so that we can actually use that first week to see what we encounter, to see if everything is falling into place, and uh, of course deliver a, 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 a sub-goal, uh, for, for example. And then in the second week, we would really have the sprint to, to uh, deliver and, and to be able to deploy something meaningf meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, <laughs> that was w working really well in the beginning because we had a, a, a very quickly evolving product. So uh, we were a startup, um, we were having f uh, a lot of uh, uh, feedback from, from our, our beta users, uh, which were about two and a half thousand uh, users. Uh, and that's a lot of feedback to, to work with. Um, and then as, as, as the product grew more mature and y you build out the feature set, you see that the, the problems become more complex mm. uh, because it's, yes. it might be a little thing that you want to change, but it can also be, hey, this whole thing we thought of five years ago, we, we need to completely rethink that. Yeah. And, and if, if, you're, if you're going through processes like that, then, then even two weeks isn't enough. Mm. So, uh, so we're up to, to four weeks now, uh, which, is, which is at the moment fine uh, for, for the product, for the stage of the product. Um, but I, m I mean, I can't uh, uh, exclude that we'll go back to two weeks if, if we start you know, uh, working in, in quicker iterations because of new possibilities. Uh, for example, um, in the, the AFS personal context, uh, which is personal finance management, there's a new a uh, European change coming up in which uh, gives fintechs easier access to, to banking information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so when that happens sometime, sometime next year, uh, then we'll, we'll probably go back to two weeks because we need to iterate really quickly and make sure that, that things get pushed to, to production really quickly. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're not afraid to change. So at the moment, four weeks is fine, but yeah. going back to two weeks, no problem. Cool. 
Cool, and also cool to hear the um, uh, reasoning behind changing the, uh, the rhythm. <laughs> um, one thing that uh, I wanted to ask, because you're now talking about the one scrum team you work with for uh, AFS Personal mainly, yeah. and you earlier you mentioned that you also uh, this team also works on some other projects sometimes, so yep. it's not exclusively for AFS Personal. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how many teams, uh, uh, scrum teams or agile teams, IT teams, work for AFS in total? Uh, we have about eight different teams now. Okay. Um, and they're segmented again in, let's say, the, the, the architectural teams, the, the front-end teams, mm. and the implementation teams. Okay. So it's, uh, we, ha we have a segment, let's say, a grouping of the teams as well. Okay. Um, and, and that's because uh, um, the, the product that we're working on with those Scrum teams uh, is our uh, actually our next generation platform for the whole enterprise uh, mm. version. Uh, and, and having those, let's say, specific um, uh, uh, focus points is is for enterprise. It's it's really handy. So usually y you can in in a smaller context, for example, half personal, you can have a multidisciplinary team with the expertise to do any project basically on the platform. Yeah, um, so from the architectural uh, stuff to the front end. Exactly, but and uh, but as you. Ha if, if we're, you're talking about a product that's used by uh, 10,000 companies, you know, ranging mm. from five employees to 50,000 employees. So it's, it's really complex and really huge. So then the, the extra segmentation works really well. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, this helps us uh, put your Scrum team, so to say, in the in context. Perspective. Yes, yeah, of course. So that's, uh, that's very good to know. Yeah. So um, can you maybe uh, share with us uh, a story of um, great success or failure, where you learned a lot, uh, in your collaboration with the Scrum team? So something you learned over the past uh, seven, eight years of uh, working with Scrum, mm -hmm. and where you uh, maybe first uh, uh, di did something <laughs> suboptimal, yeah. and then you had to recover from that, but came yeah. out stronger with the team. Uh, yeah, well, I, um, it's, it's not as, as black and white as you put it, um, but one of the things we really struggled with in the beginning, and, and maybe we were not looking at it the right way, was um, the, the, the goals that we mm. need to reach at the end of the sprint, right? And the scoping you do before uh, you start a sprint. And um, in, in the beginning, we were really trying to, you know, that we're not going to deviate, you know, and, and it's, it's the responsibility of the Scrum team to make sure that at the beginning of the sprint or before we start the sprint, you know, we completely agree on the work package and if it's realistic or not. And then during the sprint, yeah, we would basically already see during the first week, well, we're <laughs> never going to get this, right? So, but well, we were like, you know, just ignoring it and saying, no, we need to reach that goal, even though in the first week we already knew that's never going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we were kind of putting, our, basically I was putting pressure on the team and say, guys, you said that, I'm going to see that at the end of those two weeks, right? <laughs> yes, so this is your job, <laughs> fix it. Exactly, <laughs> because it's, 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 it's your promise. It's your promise yes. to, to, to the team and to yourself and to, to the product owner. And um, so that was, I think that was not the right way to actually, you know, fix the problem. And, uh, um, but it was the only thing we had, you know, if, if you d it's, it's a universal uh, uh, discussion. If, if you don't have a deadline if, or if you don't, have mm -hmm. some pressure, right? Then Slack is, it's, it's not, I mean, it's, people will just adapt to the amount of pressure and the amount of Slack that is mm -hmm. available. Up to a certain point. Up to a certain point, There's right? a breaking point. Of course. Let me uh, assure you. Of course, <laughs> but <laughs> let's say doing, doing a project with no pressure at all, mm -hmm. it's also not the best thing, right? Uh, at least in our opinion, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's suboptimal. Yeah, so there some should, healthy there pressure. should be some health. Yeah. And that's the whole idea of iterating, but having goals you need to meet every single sprint, right? Yeah. So, um, and, and that's what we, we changed. Uh, we changed that uh, we were going to keep holding on to the, the goals that we had set, even though we, we knew we weren't going to reach them in the first week. Um, we, we now basically have a, a, re a, a very um, relaxed goal setting. So yes, I, I have to, um, um, I said in English, um, I have to trust the team 
that they are giving me a, a realistic uh, interpretation of, of the work mm -hmm. package and, and what we can realize in, in, in our sprint. Um, and I also have to trust the team, of course, that if they say, well, it's not going to happen. And then I shouldn't react as, whoa, 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 you, you told me <laughs> that and this. And, and of course, and you, you need to be able to challenge the team because um, it, it's not that they come, they come back to me and say, hey, um, we're not going to, it's not never going to happen, you know, we need to just scope the whole thing off. Um, I also challenge them back, well, okay, what can we do? And how far can we get? And how, yes. uh, yeah, and of course, the, the team itself does it already. So basically, I, I get the message, okay, we're not going to have this, but we had a, another session and we're going to have this. And yes. that's useful because then we can continue and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So that it's, it's not only just throwing in the towel, no, it's throwing in the towel and a, an extra solution exactly. <laughs> to, to make sure that we, we are productive. Yeah. So to summarize, you went from um, standing opposite to each other, where you were the, the cl classic uh, uh, pitfall of a product owner saying, <laughs> oh, this is your responsibility, I did my work, now you have to deliver. Yep. And now you turned it around to saying, okay, if something uh, happens, which is why we're uh, trying to be agile, right? We want to respond to change. Yeah. Then uh, you now collaborate. Mm -hmm on how best to maximize the value of the uh, amount of work you can do. Yeah. So that's a yeah. really good point. And yeah. maybe just it, it, it's uh, in basically at the end of your questions, but mm. uh, you asked me for as homework, what is the wha one of the better qualities mm. and one of the worst yes. qualities according to my Scrum team? It's basically what you just said, you know, being able to adapt yeah. during Whatever happens in, in context uh, around a sprint, uh, it's, it's a good quality, but it's also an irritating one at some times because you don't want to incorporate too much change in during uh, a sprint. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, tr trying to make the best of a changing situation is, is well, I think that's uh, one of the, my better qualities. But then again, sometimes it's very irritating for the team yes. because they need to understand why we need to change or why we need to deviate from the original plan. Yes, which is uh, also part of your job, right? Of course. So, uh, yeah. But uh, it can be very challenging to uh, explain this uh, in, the in the right way. Yeah. And um, it's always a balancing act. Uh, I mean, yeah. we don't want to uh, every day say, oh, now the goal has changed, now the goal has changed. And the team yeah. cannot really get into the groove and flow of working. So, yeah, yeah. cool. Cool. Well, we have two homework uh, st <laughs> uh, things yeah. already uh, covered, yeah. so that's that, that's really cool. Um, with that, I would like to close this topic, uh, yeah. unless you still have something else to share on the team collaboration part. Um, no, not not specifically. Um, but the, the only uh, maybe connection I would like to make mm. with, let's say, the, the the product owner and, and, and Scrum uh, team role and the product management role mm. and let's say the bigger. Uh, uh, enterprise uh, product at, uh, at AFAS um, is that basically in, in, in the product uh, um, manager's role, the, the whole system and, and the dynamics and uh, the, the methodology is basically, it's you can say it's Scrum, but it's, a, uh, let's say the only thing is it's, it's a bit slower, right? So because it's like a, I'm not saying uh, that, that, the, let's say the, the scrum team is the are the small speed boats and the enterprise product is the big oily tanker yeah the, the oil, oil, oil uh, tanker yeah, tanker. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's it's um, it's not much uh, very different from each other so a lot yes. of people when when they come to our company and they, they see we have different uh, project teams using different methodologies to uh, build our products um, and they say, wow, but that's, that's, that's the old fashioned way. And why aren't you doing everything with Scrum, right? And then I tell them, well, this is how we work uh, on our current product. And they're like, okay, it's not, doesn't, uh, you know, even though you might segment your teams in, in, in the classic silos, you know, the mm -hmm. uh, design uh, realization, testing, et cetera, the way we work is very much leaning towards the, the Scrum methodology. Yeah. So it's more, uh, I think, how people tr interpret your your uh, your your role at at a company and how the teams work together, um, than that you can just see black and white. Hey, but that's the old-fashioned way of doing things. Yes, so as, as as long as you keep uh, focus on 
delivering value, of which course. is the, the main, main topic any company should be concerned exactly. about, right? Yep. And uh, um, doing what works. Exactly, and that's that's coming back to the, the whole, you know, be, be aware of that it shouldn't be dogmatic. It, it shouldn't exactly. be, these are the rules and that's how you should do it. No, yeah. it's yeah. different for every uh, company. Yeah, and regarding the pace, I think that's also really important to note. Uh, when you're talking about portfolio stuff, uh, it's logical that the pace feels slower because you're talking about coordinating a large effort of multiple teams. And uh, just like we discussed that you don't want the Scrum team to have a different goal each day, you don't want your entire company to have different goals each week or two weeks. Exactly. So it's, it should be slower so the self-organizing teams doing the work can actually put their own uh, uh, smaller goals towards these bigger goals. So yep. that's, that's fully logical, yep. uh, but good to uh, uh, reiterate. Yep. Cool. With that, I'd like to close the Scrum team collaboration part and uh, we'll continue next with the stakeholder interactions. <laughs>